Hi, everybody. Michael Dowling here at Fernbank Science Center. I'm the director of the DeKalb Elementary Science Olympiad, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about barge building. This is an event that is straight out of the Science Olympiad manual, so you don't need any modifications or anything like that. What you probably want to do is make sure that your students have practiced. Barge building uh, is going to involve an official piece of aluminum foil that we provide. This is standard weight. There's nothing special about it. Whatever type of foil you are likely to get at the grocery store is going to work fine. Students receive a single 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter square at the competition. If they tear it, they are allowed to get a second piece, but they are counted down for that. So all the barges that only require one rather than two get scored higher. So you don't want to tear your barge material before you get started. Um, no tape is allowed, so when the students are making their barge, everything is being done by folding it and uh, crimping the corner somehow. Uh, I wanted to show some simple um, folds. I'm not doing anything uh, that your students wouldn't think about on their own, so I'm just pre-folding a corner there. I'm going to do a folded corner on one of the adjacent sides, and then what I'd like to have you... Uh, think about is how the students might want to crimp this corner to make it nice and secure. So as they do the folding, one thing they are allowed to do carefully, obviously, is to tear the foil. So if they'd like to do that, I'm not sure that's an advantage or a disadvantage. I'm just suggesting it's something that they could do. I'm going to fold my corner here so that now I have a nice clean corner. And if I fold the bits over, uh, I have to hope that water doesn't seep into that torn part. So just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you want to do it that way. I just wanted to make sure that people knew uh, the design of this barge and how you do it uh, are things that you want to practice in advance. So I'm, I'm making my barge. Um, I, I wanted to focus my video today on how the students will load the barge. And one of the skills involved in that is a math skill. And sometimes people are caught a little bit unawares so I wanted to make sure I did that. So I am making the world's worst barge. <laughs> I'm just folding it over. I'm not really taking a lot of time to do anything properly. And uh, there we go. What I've made, it, it's just going to have to work. When we test the barges, you don't need a lot of water. I've got two sample bins here. Sometimes we use these at the competition. There might only be a couple of inches of water. I've also got a rather small plastic bin. And uh, most of the barges are small enough that that'll fit in there. So as long as the water level is high enough that I can test that the barge doesn't sink down and touch the bottom, uh, I'm going to be okay. I want to use this one to make it a little more obvious to you what I'm doing. So I'm going to put water from my beaker here into this little white dish. And as I do this, um, I am going to have the possibility of some spills. So when you're doing this at home, Remember, there's going to be some displacement of the liquid when you put the barge in and it sinks down, so don't fill it up to the very top, right? That's what Archimedes discovered, Eureka. And uh, when, you, uh, when you put your barge in there, you obviously would want to have the bottom nice and flat. I haven't been very careful with mine. I wanted to focus on the idea of loading it, and we frequently get questions, well, what item is going to be used? We are not going to tell you that. We will let you know at the competition what it's going to be. And you do know in advance that all of the items that will be uh, loaded into the barges will be identical. And I wanted to give you a, a sample for some of the things that, that might be. Uh, for example, we might use rubber stoppers. These are two hole stoppers. See the hole there? And I've got a whole bunch of them here. So the idea is uh, that certainly is a number that might fit into one of these barges. They might have to get stacked. So they're not very heavy, but they do take up some space. And you might need to think about, well, if we're asked to load our barge with something like plastic spools or stoppers or little wood cubes, things that aren't very heavy, you might need to think about practicing stacking so that the barge doesn't get uneven and tip over on one side. So when I put these in, in mine, uh, one, no problem. Let's try two. Two, no problem. Three, no problem. So it's pretty easy. Ooh, ooh. I don't know if you can see that one corner is getting kind of low. Didn't do a very good job. But if I had practiced that ahead of time, I probably would have a better design. Uh, here's four. I'm going to put it on the opposite side to kind of balance it out. I'm doing fine. Um, ooh, one corner over here is quite low. 
surface tension alone is preventing water from coming in. So I suspect when I put five in, four is going to be my limit where no water came in. So five, let's try it. Do we have room for it? Yes, here it is. And oh, water came in. So I would have received credit for four, holding four of those stoppers. Here are some of the other items you might expect to discover at the tournament when you are going to load. These are just standard uh, machine screws. Machine screws are easily found at a hardware store, Home Depot. There's nothing special about the size. It's just that the density, it's metal. Uh, these are nickel plated steel. So, you know, how uh, heavy are those? Well, here's a whole container of them. And uh, this particular size, they're all one inch. So uh, because they're screws, they have a tendency to kind of ro uh, roll around. And the threads, uh, they're not that sharp, but they could cut into a uh, thin aluminum foil barge if there's a huge pile of them. So you might want to consider uh, what features you might uh, want to use if you get to the Olympiad and discover that the load object has some sharp edges. For example, you might want to uh, double over part of the foil, you know, on the loading portion. You, you could have a very small uh, barge that has very tall walls also, things like that. Now, the students will know what the objects are as they begin to build. So I am encouraging you to think about objects of different sizes, geometries, materials, and densities in particular, uh, including things that are very light. Imagine this third possibility. This might not be that hard to hold up. It's a stack of cups. And the cups are very light. They are pretty easily stacked here on my keyboard. And uh, the problem is they're so big this way that I might have to stack them up the way I have here, like that old story about the man who sold hats and he had like 50 hats stacked up. Um, this might be an interesting load. And a lot of teams don't always think about testing with something like that. What if the load included round objects like marbles where they tend to roll around? Uh, perhaps the students would want to make small dimples with their finger somehow so that the bottom row of marbles sits like eggs in an egg carton and they don't have a tendency to roll from one place to another. That might make it easier to load the barge in a symmetrical way from one corner across and then fill in towards the middle. So, as I said previously, the students will know the load object at the competition before they begin to build, but that uh, doesn't mean you can't anticipate all sorts of things. So I have showed you three. I talked about the stoppers, I talked about using machine screws, and I talked about using cups. Uh, I would encourage you to think about other things that we might provide. They're always going to be inexpensive and we need to have them in large numbers. Now, the final skill that I think I should mention to you is mathematic uh, in nature. Um, students won't be able to use a calculator for this, but the idea is they need to predict how many of the objects will go onto their completed barge. Now, they've practiced, so presumably they know, they have a good feel, how many grams of mass their standard design can hold up. Suppose they've done several tests and they know that they can consistently hold up, let me just make up a round number, um, 100 grams when they use small objects like pennies. They will need to turn that maximum load into a number of objects for the prediction. And this involves something that's very similar to a unit conversion. So depending on the age of your child, they may or may not have done this. So this is something that you want to make sure that they know and have had chances to practice at. I'm going to show you on this card what I'm talking about. I know that I've got 100 grams of load capacity. I'm asking you to imagine that I've done enough tests that I can consistently do this. Suppose we are presented at the tournament with the stoppers. I'm going to use my scale right here at the Olympiad, we would have already massed out, weighed out these objects. So the students will have the mass per item on the board. Mine's ready to go. This is 14 grams. So now I need to convert the known from practice, the known maximum load 
I need to divide by 14 grams per stopper to get the anticipated number of stoppers. So when I do this, what I would like to encourage you to practice with your child is they know the mass in advance. They're going to divide by the mass per item, and then they have to be able to do that simple division. No calculators allowed. Now, in third grade, I do remember learning how to do long division, but I'm not sure if that's still the case. Are the third graders learning it? Are they learning in the fourth grade? Are they any good at it? That's your chance to find out. I would encourage you to remind your student that uh, there are tricks to estimating the number. They, they can do it longhand if they like. They'll certainly have time. But um, there are tricks to doing these problems that you might want to remind them of. For example, both of my numbers happen to be um, even. So I could do the same problem by taking 50 divided by 7. And now I'm in territory where just by memorizing times tables, oh, 7 times 7 is 49. That's pretty close to 50. So I would anticipate that my uh, barge could hold up seven items. That's one way to do this. Are there other ways? Sure. You could simply estimate. And if I used my original uh, 100 grams and I just decided that uh, 14 is too hard to divide by, uh, do I want to round down? You'll get, a, you'll get a larger number of items. Or do I want to round up? So on the back side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask you to imagine I've tested and I've confirmed I can consistently hold 100 grams with my standard design. I'm going to take my 14, and to give me an upper limit, I'm going to round it down to 10. 100 divided by the rounded down to 10 is just going to be 10. Now, if I want to get the lower limit, I would round up. So 100 grams is my tested maximum capacity. If I round from 14 up to 20, 100 divided by 20 is 5. So 14 is roughly halfway between those limits found just by estimating and rounding. Uh, I could estimate somewhere in the middle. That would be 7 and a half. Oh, uh, let's round. Let's go. Let's go for it. Let's predict 8 items. And depending on how many they successfully put in there, they get points based on that in addition. So make sure that your students have had some practice, not only with division, but with working with division problems that involve a decimal point. So suppose the item, all right, just to give you a smaller one, here's the machine screw. This is pretty small. When I put it on my scale, this one here, 3.4. So now I have a harder problem. I have 100 grams of mass when I've tested. And now I need to divide by 3.4 grams per machine screw. That's a lot harder to do because of that decimal point. Let me make it bigger so it shows up on camera. And I just want to remind you once again, rounding and estimating are perfectly fine. If I round this number, the mass per item, up, I am going to get a lower limit. So if I just round this up, don't worry about four. How about five? If I round this up, I have 100 divided by five. That gives me 20. These are numbers that I'm assuming most of the clever kids who do science Olympiad could probably divide in their head or on a piece of scratch paper. And they'll have their name uh, and the paper that has their name in school. So they would have something to work with. Um, 100 divided by 5 is 20. I assume most of the students could probably do division like that. So when you are practicing, make sure you've observed that the students have checked for that skill also, that they know how to do it. Then the fun of loading it comes in. We typically allow the students to load as long as we have time. We have to make sure that we have a steady flow of uh, testing going on. So we have had occasions where the event uh, sponsors, the people running the event, are doing the loading because they can do it a little faster. But in general, we like to let the students test it. So we have multiple testing areas. And uh, hopefully, we'll have some great barges built at the 2023 DeKalb Elementary Science Olympiad. I appreciate your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Michael Dowling at Fermic Science Center. Thanks for listening.